Tears of the Kingdom, a.k.a. the sequel to Breath of the Wild, is one of the most terrifying games I think I have ever seen because of this 10-minute gameplay snippet we got this week. But why? Do you mean, like, horrifying? Do you mean, like, like scary, like, horror? No. I'm going to pull out my Switch OLED. I was not sold on this game whatsoever because if it sold me, it might get out of me 365 hours out of me before I am done with it. Not everybody's going to play this game as much as that. Not everybody played Breath of the Wild like that. I have friends and people I know that didn't even beat the game or they were done with it in like 30 to 50 hours. But for those out there that like to look at every little nook and cranny, for those out there that like to investigate and go on that thrill of an adventure of what could be out there, Breath of the Wild was that game. And Elden Ring is the only other game as long as Red Dead Redemption 2. Like, those two are the only things that compete with Breath of the Wild. And this game had not sold me until this 10-minute thing. And now that it has, it is terrifying. And how could it possibly get that many hours out of me yet again when it is the same map but different? Hey, it's Samurai Kyuji. I like to speculate on games with you and... This is something that a topic, you know, I want to see your thoughts in the comments about because the thing that really did this is these new sandbox elements. When I say sandbox, imagine the toys. It's not the literal like sandbox that you play in at the playground. It's the toys that are in that sandbox. That's what the term sandbox means. And this world has not still hasn't quite sold me yet. The world half of my fears for this game, because with its vague marketing, yes, Nintendo kills it all the time, and I am a primary Xbox guy, but I still love me my Nintendo games now and then, and this was one of the two Nintendo games this year. I'm like, am I going to get it? Am I willing to put in another 300 hours into this Zelda game that is going to be 10 bucks more than the previous, and so far looks to just be a giant expansion of the first game, because the world is pretty much the same world, the graphics are still the same graphics. That sandbox half got shown to us this week, or whenever you watch this, this 10 minutes of gameplay that they showed. They showed the tools, the toys that you're going to be playing with in this world, and they show some new mechanics that lead to the experimentation that this game will have, the freedom that it will have. And that experimentation is what may suck up all your time. I have many games I would like to play. You have many games you would like to play this year in this apocalypse of a year. April alone, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Uh, if you have Game Pass, The Last Case of Benedict Fox, Ghostwire Tokyo is coming. And there's a third one I am forgetting. Oh, Minecraft Legends. That's just in April, okay? And you're probably still gonna be working on those games in May. Red Falls in May. There's Dead Island 2. There's many things. Hell, there's probably games you still haven't gotten to and then games coming out in June that you want to get to. But I'm going to warn you, if you are an inquisitive person, if you are truly a gamer that likes to dive into a world and experiment and have played Outer Wilds, I see you out there. This game will take up the rest of your year because of these sandbox elements. You get to fuse together these breakable weapons that you had in the first game, which was a big thing about the first game that kind of made it engaging, in my opinion, and others too. Breath of the Wild review 10 out of 10, almost unanimously everywhere, one game of the year. Masterpiece, truly one of the best open worlds, if not the best open world game of all time. And that's because, yes, it's world, you know, it could have had better graphics, but it had so much character to it and characters put into it to help and mechanics like cooking foods that would give you certain buffs, weapons that you would have to be careful using because you don't want to break any, and you can climb literally any face of the world. There was all these mechanics that made the world engaging to engage with. And that's what Tears of the Kingdom as a sequel is trying to do. Now I finally understand that. And that's what they showed in this 10 minutes, because not only is weapon still breakable, you can fuse your stick with a rock. You can do whatever the heck you want to do with this new mechanic of fusing. There might even be crazy mechanics that you can do reversing time, because that's an element that you can do to get back up to the sky islands that they say. And this world, by the way, <laughs> 
This world could potentially be like double or triple the size that Breath of the Wild was, which is saying something, because that world was huge. And yes, I, I would say dense with things to do, not dense in terms of like busyness, but just dense with things to do if you're inquisitive. Again, that is the motive of Breath of the Wild, and that is the motive of this game, it seems, to just simply go on this adventure and to see what you, the player, can uncover by reversing time to get to the Sky Islands, by helping your durability with certain weapons, by fusing them with rocks or other things or two weapons together, by also building your own boats, because that's something that you can do too. There's certain wind turbines and everything. These are things that Breath of the Wild people figured out over time. And the developers just left those tools for the players to, you know, they might have even thought of doing that, but the players thought of certain things like putting certain balloons on a raft to make it like an air raft and then you could use your uh, Korok leaf or whatever to make the wind blow so you have a floating raft. That's what people thought of doing in the first game when the developers probably had no intention of that whatsoever. But now they included these tools to fuse things and craft things in a very vast world that... Remember what I said about layers? Another element that people aren't really talking about with this is being able to go through any ceiling. At first, it just looks like, oh, that's going to save me time when I want to climb a mountain. No, no, no. <laughs> you remember that moment in Elden Ring where you go down for the first time? Kind of spoilers, big spoilers for Elden Ring. There's a moment where you're going underground in this game and you already think, wow, Limgrave is huge. This is a this is from Soft's first big open world game. But you find an elevator that takes you so down underground that adds an entire other like realm or layer to this game that's just like, how much is here? And as you keep exploring the game, you find all these different layers that FromSoft put into their map that makes it such an expansive world. That's what makes it one of the best open worlds of all time. And now it seems like Tears of the Kingdom with that ceiling mechanic, people are just thinking, wow, that's going to save time in climbing? No. I bet you that there is an underground part of this game. If you look at certain snippets of other trailers, it seems like that's pretty much all but confirmed. There is underground parts of this game, and they were probably vast. Hell, even the first teaser for this game showed Zelda and Link going through an underground cave there's probably a lot of them. That mechanic, it's going to help you to get out of these places sooner. Maybe there's like, like these little rooms or maybe you can do it whenever you want if you just need to get out fast. Kind of like the fast travel system of the first game with the shrines. Maybe the shrines function differently in this game. Are there even shrines? That was your fast travel system in this game. But now you have this Mirio mechanic. Shout out to my Hero Academia watchers. That probably adds, you know, that underground layer. And then there's the middle world. That was the world you knew before, but now it's a bit different. And now there's this upper world that you reverse time to get to and you can craft all this shit like an air vehicle or a boat or a car to get all around this map as fast as possible. And that's putting aside all of the resource necessity to experiment in this game. Because you could fuse your weapons, yeah, but you could also like just random food you get off of animals. You could put that on your arrows and craft what could potentially be like hundreds of different kinds of arrows. Instead of just the three to five, there's like hundreds of combinations, if not thousands. This game has potentially limitless potential. <laughs> and that's why it's dangerous. That's why it's terrifying. Yes, the world didn't sell me, but these tools and sandbox in this new version of this world, it could lead to essentially you being on an endless adventure of experimentation in every little nook and cranny that they put in this place with hopefully a compelling story, but let's be real, we're going to completely ignore the story for these new mechanics and places that we might see and creatures we might fight. If you have any interest in any games in this crazy ass year where June you're going to get Diablo 4, you're going to get Final Fantasy 16, you're going to get uh, Street Fighter 6, if you have any interest in these, and you are a person like me that is primarily Xbox, loves his Game Pass stuff, has a PlayStation, has a Nintendo, and you have any interest in this game, be prepared 
that you may not play anything else if it hooks you. If it hooks you, it might not hook you, but if it hooks you, you may not play anything else for the rest of the year, potentially. That's, I know that's kind of a ballsy call, but I say again, 360 hours. I am t over 200 hours in my first playthrough of Elden Ring. Again, not everybody's like me, but some are. And if you are, be careful with this game. <laughs> that is my PSA to you. But I upload these videos to get your thoughts in the comments and to talk about it with you. What is the game that you don't want Tears of the Kingdom to distract you from if it does? It's around Redfall. Um, there's, then there's a the June Madness. What are you worried that it'll distract you from? Let me know in the comments and your thoughts on these mechanics. And don't forget to be proud awesome. It's never too late to speculate.